So the world is currently obsessed with how we can live longer. And people are doing some pretty crazy things on their quest for immortality. Like he takes like 40 vitamins in the yeah. morning and 40 more in the afternoon. This is my morning pills. Ashwagandha, calcium alpha ketoglutarate, EPA, 500 milligrams of cocoa flavanols, hyaluronic acid, garlic, turmeric. This whole movement has many different names. Longevity mix. Anti-aging. Biohacking. But apparently if you want to live longer, you start by having one of these, a smartwatch. We now live in a time where we can quantify our health like never before from our heart rate to our step count. And our watches are getting pretty good at telling us how healthy we really are. But it seems to me like the world has gone crazy trying to hyper-optimize their numbers without even knowing what they mean. And I've become the most measured person in history. If using like MyFitnessPal or Chronometer, it can actually write your nutrition data. This man is spending $2 million a year to reverse aging. Now, how many supplements do you take every day? Over 100. I don't get eight hours of sleep. Am I going to die? I said, well, I can assure you, you're going to die. <laughs> more data just means more health anxiety. And I just logged what is potentially the best sleep score in human history. So I thought I'd get down to the bottom of this and find out what really is the most important number for our health. The health metrics I'm going to focus on are heart rate, step count, and VO2 max. So I'm gonna give each metric a score out of 10. So that's five points for how much it can tell us about our health and five points for how reliable the reading on our smart devices actually are. At the end, I'm gonna count up the score and then crown the most important number for our health. Let's start with talking about arguably the most important organ in our body, the heart. At the most basic level, your heart pumps blood around the body and blood carries the oxygen and nutrients which you need to survive. The number of times your heart beats per minute is known as your heart rate and you can measure it yourself. Just place two fingers on your wrist like this, feel for your pulse, and then count the number of times your heart beats in a minute. It's wildly accepted that a normal resting heart rate is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. And for centuries, doctors have used this as a way to assess a person's health. For such a simple number, your resting heart rate can tell us so much about your health and fitness, but can it predict whether you're likely to live longer? Well, this analysis looked at a total of 87 different studies and found that actually, yes, it can. This graph shows how your risk of dying changes as your heart rate increases. The study found that for every 10 beat per minute increase in resting heart rate, your risk of dying increased by 17%. The data in this graph looked at something called all-cause mortality, which is your risk of dying from any disease. But the study also pointed out that a high resting heart rate puts you at risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, and even cancer. And these findings were also supported in other studies. So this is a really important reason to try and take measures to lower your resting heart rate. But you can actually learn so much about your health from your heart rate during exercise too. It's recommended that you should do at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. Most people focus on trying to get 150 minutes of exercise in the week, but forget that doing the right intensity of exercise is just as important. One study followed over a thousand joggers for eight years and found that a slow to average pace jog for one to two and a half hours per week was associated with the lowest risk of dying. But those that were running at a higher intensity for a longer duration per week actually saw an increased risk of death. So we need to work our heart just the right amount, but one person's light workout might be someone else's strenuous. So how do we know what the right exercise intensity is for ourselves? Well, you might have heard some of the longevity gurus talk about zone two cardio. I mean, historically I've put in 14 to 20 hours a week into cardio. When I'm in zone two, I can spend the entire 45 minutes on a phone call. Remember 80% of my training volume is at zone two. Really, all this means is that when you exercise, you're keeping your heart rate at around 60 to 70 percent of maximum or otherwise moderate intensity you can calculate your zone 2 heart rate range by firstly working out your max heart rate a rule of thumb for the average person is 220 beats per minute minus your age so as a 23 year old i can expect my max heart rate to be around 200 beats per minute this means that my zone 2 cardio range would be between 120 and 140 beats per minute you can then track your heart rate whilst exercising and adjust your workout intensity accordingly to keep your heart rate in this range. So overall, as a predictor of longevity, your heart rate can tell us so much about your health. And so for this reason, I'm scoring at four and a half points out of five. But actually, how accurate are these at measuring your heart rate in the first place? Well, the research suggests that it really does depend on the brand and model of your watch. This study looked at six different smart devices and compared the heart trackers with gold standard medical equipment. It found that the Apple Watch, Whoop, Polar and Aura Ring were fairly accurate in their readings, whilst the Garmin tended to underestimate and the Somfit tended to overestimate. 
What some smartwatches gave very accurate and consistent readings, others didn't. And for that reason, I'm scoring the overall reliability of smartwatch heart readings as four out of five. So that gives a grand total score of eight and a half out of 10. Now let's scrutinize our next health metric the step count. So how many steps do you try to get each day? Taking 10,000 steps a day is the ideal number to hit to reap health benefits. But is this true? New study just out is challenging the tried and true number of 10,000 steps a day, saying that fewer steps less frequently might be as beneficial for your health. So the 10,000 step per day recommendation actually originated in the 1964 Tokyo Olympic Games. The Japanese number for 10,000 apparently looks like a man running. And so it was used by a company that sells pedometers as a marketing ploy to get more people to buy their product. And since then, the number is stuck and it's become the mainstream step target that everyone should hit per day. But is it actually true? Well, this study on nearly 80,000 people in the UK found that the Japanese might have been right. If we look at this graph, look at, this graph. at the bottom is the average number of steps taken per day and at the side is the risk of dying. We can see that as the daily number of steps increased, the risk of dying decreased by over 50%. But also the curve seems to flatten out at around 10,000 steps, suggesting that steps beyond 10,000 don't significantly reduce the risk of dying any further. These findings have also been supported in other studies too. So is your step count the best metric for your health? Well, as a predictor for longevity, it's important to note that whilst the study found that getting 10,000 steps per day did decrease the risk of dying, not all steps had the same health benefit. High intensity, purposeful steps were deemed much more beneficial than those incidental lower intensity steps. So counting steps isn't everything. And for this reason, it only scores three points out of five. Next, to measure the accuracy of the step tracker on our smartwatches, I decided to do an experiment of my own. So it's a beautiful day and I've got my Apple watch on. And so I thought I'd go for a walk and I'm gonna count every step I take. So literally one, two, three, and I'm gonna walk a thousand steps. And then at the same time, I'm gonna get my watch to count my steps. And then at the end, I wanna see how close my watch has gotten and how accurate it really is. So I guess this is my version of a science experiment. So I hope you enjoy, and I should probably start walking. So see you soon. I'm gonna take the first step of my walk. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, five, nine, 996, 997, 998, 999, 1000. Gosh, my hand hurts a lot. So I'm gonna put this camera down, but yeah, let's check how many steps I've done. After painstakingly counting a thousand steps, my Apple Watcher told me that I'd only walked 875. And this tendency to underestimate steps was well documented in other scientific papers too. So for this reason, as a measure of reliability, I'm only giving smartwatch based step counting a three out of five. So that means a total score of six out of 10. And finally, let's talk about another huge buzzword amongst the longevity experts and fitness gurus, VO2 max. VO2 max is the greatest predictor of lifespan. It might sound really complicated, but actually if we break it down into the individual parts, it's a lot easier to understand. V is for volume, O2 is for oxygen, and max is for maximum. So it's the maximum amount of oxygen your body can absorb and use during exercise. VO2 max is usually measured in a lab. So scientists will get you to run on a treadmill once you wear a tightly fitted mask that measures the amount of oxygen you breathe in and CO2 you breathe out. Scientists gradually increase the speed of the treadmill until you're running flat out. At this point, the measurements from the gases in your mask are then able to be used to calculate your VO2 max. VO2 max is considered the gold standard for measuring your aerobic fitness and your cardiorespiratory health. And it's a number that naturally declines with age. Recent smartwatch models are now claiming to be able to predict your VO2 max by measuring your heart rate whilst exercising. But how accurate is it? And is it a number worth tracking? This study measured the cardiorespiratory fitness using VO2 max of over 120,000 people. The individuals were placed into five different groups based on their VO2 max and fitness level and were then followed over 10 years. It found that as VO2 max went up, the risk of dying went down and those with a low VO2 max had a significantly lower survival probability over 10 years in comparison to the other groups. And these findings were also replicated in a similar study, as well as all of these two. So the evidence is very established. The better your aerobic fitness and VO2 max levels, the greater your chance of living longer. And so for this reason, VO2 max as a predictor of longevity scores five out of five points. But can you trust this number on your smartwatch? In my research, I found only one high quality systematic review that tried to answer this question. This graph shows the results. 
The bottom shows the brand and the name of the watch tested, and the side represents how close the smartwatch reading was to the lab-based test. The closer the dots were to the red line, the more accurate the smartwatches were. And for context, the vertical lines running through each dot are error bars and tell us how uncertain the measurements were. The longer the line, the greater the uncertainty around the result. We can see that different wearable devices vary wildly in how accurate they estimate VO2 max. And for some devices, there's a lot of uncertainty in their estimates. This means that even the same device might not give a consistent VO2 max reading every time. For this reason, I'm only scoring the smartwatch VO2 max reading a two and a half out of five, giving a grand total score of seven and a half out of 10. And there we have it. If we tally up all the scores, the best number to track on your smartwatch is in my opinion, your heart rate. This video was made for purely entertainment purposes, and I just wanted to provide some context into the numbers that the self-proclaimed longevity gurus are convincing you to hyper-optimize. It's really easy for all these biohackers, pseudoscientists, longevity gurus to tell you to follow their protocol and to track these specific metrics to live longer. But in reality, they're missing that healthcare is nuanced. There is no one size fits all. So at the end of the day, the most important number to track is both all of them and none of them. Whether it's tracking your heart rate, counting your steps, or measuring your VO2 max, they are all useless as a predictor of longevity if you aren't getting any exercise in in the first place. So the best number from your watch is the one that will get you most motivated to exercise. And this could be none of them. You don't need a smartwatch to exercise and you don't need to be tracking your health metrics to live longer. Fundamentally, it just comes down to exercising on a consistent and regular basis. All the references that went into making this video will be in the video description below. I hope you enjoy this different format and please make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can check out one of my previous videos I made on the effect that blue light has on your sleep and how you can sleep better. That'll be here. Until next time and see you soon.